our solar system has quite a lot of different very interesting asteroids. But I think none are as interesting as this one right here, the asteroid we currently refer to as Psyche. Also known as 16 Psyche because it's the 16th asteroid ever discovered. Although back in the days when it was just found, the early astronomers actually thought that these were planets. Today we don't think so anymore, but we still call them minor planets sometimes. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Today we're going to be talking about this very interesting object, briefly discuss the upcoming mission that's going to be launching very very soon, but more importantly, discuss some of the more unusual findings from just the last few years that help us understand exactly what this unusual object is. And it is quite unusual, mostly because of what seems to be happening on its surface. And even though we've discovered over a million different asteroids in the solar system already, with this simulation from NASA briefly showing us just some of them, of all of the other different asteroids, so far Psyche seems to be the most interesting. And here's really why. So there are three main types of asteroids in the solar system. We have the C-type, the most common type of an asteroid. The asteroids mostly made out of huge amounts of carbon that generally makes them much darker as well. And these represent about 75% of everything we have in the solar system. We then have the S-type or the silicaceous type of an asteroid that makes up approximately 17% and are mostly made out of different types of silicates containing both magnesium and iron. And then finally we have the metal or M-type asteroid, the rarest type of asteroids in the solar system, making up approximately 8% of everything, which to some extent are also responsible for affecting the evolution of human civilization. Most of these asteroids, as they fall into the planet, they mostly burn off everything around them, leaving nothing but the metal as it falls onto the ground. And this metal, as it was discovered by the early humans, became some of the first metal that was used in various types of early industries. Although mostly this was used for the creation of much simpler tools, with some of these tools also acquiring some kind of a religious meaning. As a matter of fact, some of the earliest tools from various cultures both in the Middle East and even in the Arctic contain the common patterns we find in the metals coming from various asteroids. And so these M-type asteroids, despite being rare, ended up being extremely important during the early evolution of human civilization. And it just so happens that the largest of these asteroids is the asteroid known as Psyche. But calling this just an asteroid is really a misnomer. This is a huge object. It's approximately 220 kilometers across. Or 140 miles for those of you still using miles. And ever since the original discovery, it sort of created a lot of mysteries about what exactly this was. Unlike other asteroids discovered so far, this one really seems to have way too much metal on its surface. Something that was discovered a few decades ago when the scientists used various radar studies to try to understand what's happening on the surface of various asteroids. And so because of an extremely high reflectivity of the surface of this asteroid, which is generally caused by the presence of metals, for a very long time the scientists assumed that this was maybe some kind of a exposed core of an ancient almost planet, or basically something that was supposed to become a planet but never did. Or possibly something that was becoming a planet but because of various collisions ended up losing its outer mantle, leaving behind nothing but the core itself. And so this exposed core hypothesis was the main explanation for the origin of this unusual asteroid for a very long time. But more recently, some of the other studies that looked at the influence of this asteroid on other objects, specifically looking at how the gravity from this object affects some of its neighbors, determined that its total density is not really as high as it would be if it was actually made out of nothing but metal. As a matter of fact, its density is even lower than the density of some of the other M-type asteroids, suggesting that they contain way more metal than this one. And so the explanation here was that, well, maybe this asteroid was just very porous. It contained a lot of holes on the inside, which would maybe to some extent explain its lower density. So in other words, it wasn't just one whole chunk of metal. Instead, it was basically a kind of a rubble collection of various metallic pieces, kind of similar to some other objects such as the asteroid Bennu that NASA explored not so long ago. But there were several studies from the last few years that tried to analyze if this was even possible. And specifically, they looked at what happens to these asteroids as they sort of grow in size and as they evolve, and in the end came to the conclusion that it's very unlikely. To remain very porous, the internal temperature of the asteroid psyche would have to be below 800 Kelvin right after its initial formation. And that's because above that temperature, the metal itself would either become liquid or become very malleable, and so it would not really create a very porous asteroid while also realizing that an asteroid of this size is very unlikely to cool down fast enough 
in order to create these porous conditions. And more importantly, any collision that ends up displacing some of the material would actually heat up things even more, once again destroying any porosity that would have been present here from the beginning. And so these studies determined that the porosity is probably not the answer. A much more likely answer is the presence of a lot of rock on the inside. And so at least one study that you can find in the description below explains this in a completely different way. Here the scientists believe that this is basically a kind of a inside-out object. Instead of having a metal on the outside and the rock on the outside, it seems to do the opposite. It seems to have rock on the inside, with the metal being mostly on the surface. But how would that form? Well, they actually think that there could be several ways, with one of the major ways being what the scientists refer to as ferrovulcanism, volcanoes of metals. In other words, over time, a lot of iron came out of this rock and deposited on the surface, very similar to how a lot of other objects, such as Ceres, have different types of volcanism that deposits different types of materials on their surface as well. In this case, it's usually water or a lot of other ices with some of the other studies explaining this in slightly different ways. For example, maybe instead of being differentiated, this rock is just a mixture of rock and metals and is really more of a collection of rubble of different pieces from various asteroids. In other words, at the moment, nobody really knows what's happening here. And the only way we can find out is if we actually go here, take some pictures, take some samples, and learn about it that way. And that's precisely what NASA is planning to do. We've actually talked about this a few years ago, and I promised a video in 2022, because basically we now have this new mission that's launching to this asteroid sometime in September, maybe a little bit later. We're talking about September 2022. A mission that's going to be using Mars for its gravity assist, flying by Mars in May of 2023, and arriving to the asteroid Psyche in early 2026, where it's going to spend approximately two years collecting data and doing all sorts of studies. But I guess some of the scientists couldn't wait, so they actually started to study this asteroid even earlier. And so the most recent study of this asteroid used some of the most powerful radio telescopes we have on the planet, and specifically the ALMA Observatory, located in Chile, that contains several dishes, making a virtual telescope roughly around 16 kilometers in size. A telescope that also operates in the wavelengths that are generally perfect for observing various electrical properties of metals on various asteroids. And so by using ALMA, they were able to create the new image, or I guess a new map, of what's happening on the surface of 16 Psyche. With the map on the left showing the surface property of Psyche from sandy areas, which are in purple, to rocky areas that are in yellow. But also showing us a huge abundance of metal that in the right picture is shown as yellow, suggesting that there's quite a lot of metal on the surface. In more technical terms, they actually used two different properties to study this. One was the volumetric heat capacity, also known as thermal inertia, which essentially shows us how long it takes for the material to heat up, and the second one being dielectric constant or relative permittivity, showing us how well the material conducts electricity or sound. And so in this case, by using the dielectric constant, they were able to definitively show the regions that are much richer in iron. Although interestingly here, they also discovered that some of the lower areas the ones that seem to contain some kind of a crater-like formation, seem to also possess much lower thermal inertia, or basically seem to contain much less metallic stuff in it. And right now it's not entirely clear why this is so, but they think maybe it's because of various types of debris and various types of porous material that could have deposited on the bottom of these craters, reducing the overall reflectivity and the overall metallic properties of these particular areas. Or maybe, for some reason, there's just more rocky material compared to metal here, for one reason or another. But more importantly, this new analysis definitively shows us that this is not just a metallic body or just some kind of an exposed metallic core. There definitely seems to be a mixture of stuff on the surface, which makes this object even more intriguing because we don't really know how this could form or what exactly this represents. Although honestly, ferrovulcanism does seem to make slightly more sense than anything else. And so, at least for now, that's, I guess, all we know. But we're going to know so much more in the next few years. With the mission itself launching in just a few months from when I'm making this video, and currently undergoing some of the final testing and some of the last preparations before it's going to get launched on top of the Falcon Heavy rocket by SpaceX. All of this, very likely, sometime in September of 2022. So definitely going to be a pretty exciting mission. But until then, or until we learn something else, that is all we know. 
This is definitely the most interesting asteroid in the solar system, and definitely an asteroid that's going to be teaching us so much more about what we know about the solar system and the early formation of various planets. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.